the downplaying of Marcus Porcius Cato. You apply a membrane round your words so they don't carry errors and neither any genetic defects, but allow exclusive access to Une nuit de Cleopatra, that opera about that queen that was trying out some poisons on some prisoners on that row and then afterwards from her throne was just sitting there waving with some white handkerchief. Almost every minute the thought comes to you, the words you utter need you, just like those moments right when you make sandwiches, when you want to sell me your musical sensitivity and to infect me with it. You also sit down very visibly then, with your mustard and little onions, as if you were eating Cartagenian winter radish, while you observe how your court magician's skin begins to swell up in a some horrid way, because he has bathed too long a time in a mixture of black wine, dog's milk and galbanum. Me, I don't do such things, not even to adjure the sign of the dog in some greater blessing to the god Ashmoon. In a cracked voice, I noted my own skin and joints were still in perfect order. Neither did I feel the need to, for example, let you knead my body with ointments and oil as if you were a stark naked masseuse as if there came no morning in my clear night eyes. No. Only would you now tell me, in some unguarded moment or awkward note, a hitch was threatening Earth's orbit round the sun, in ten years everything would be different on our planet, I'd look at you, not as if you were insane, but to make you clear, to simply not sink the fleet you are sailing on, which is relying on stars for navigation. You did study history, didn't you? You know not only that seas are restless, but also that solid ground under your feet shouldn't be burning or caving in. That to dare something difficult is called a stunt, that our life of leisure knows chaos only as a word, and finally, that you better not pass up on an opportunity to access any reliable information about matters of life. Only then do we see our conscience unpursued by sparks flaring up in a burning hearth, by a roaring motor in the street, or by bacteria invading our bodies day in, day out, relentlessly, be it then without causing irremediable damage. But there are those manias of yours I have to protect you against. Your oars' rhythmic splash in the water gets all too often upset by a northeast wind gathering in your soul or by a belief in suddenly fizzing gods who consider with lightning in their gaze aiming curses towards the sublunary, preferably towards those that always will question their own permeability. To wit, the question whether I can get through to you with the conviction and love that all is really okay behind that separation wall of yours that reduces all sounds and talk to some fuzzy rumble. This is why I write about you, slaughter a white bull and lean on my lance as a preamble towards thoughts about our past and our future, about a gaze that sometimes needs averting. Because after all, I love you.